We all know that if there's one group of people you shouldn't mess with, it's Mexican cartels. Them and the IRS. The cartel's power and resources are seemingly unlimited and their influence reaches deep into the state and the law. Not only are they powerful, but they're vicious and merciless too. If you've been on the internet long enough, chances are you've had the misfortune of seeing some pretty dreadful pictures and videos, and not all of them have been from BuzzFeed. And it seems like the most depraved and shocking ones are from Mexican cartels. They must be doing wonders for the snuff film industry. You don't even have to go to the darkened corners of the internet to see this stuff. There's been plenty of times I'm reading an article for research and then BAM! I'm scarred for life. Like, you know, I get it. They skinned their enemies. You didn't have to fucking show me. The newspapers over there seem to have no problem putting pictures of mutilated bodies on the goddamn front page. And then right beside them they'll have a scantily clad model like, What the fuck is this? So what would you do if these guys threatened you? You probably wouldn't tell them to do their worst. But that's just what Alejo Garza Tamez did. The absolute madman took them head on. So, how did that work out for him? Alejo Garza Tamez was born in Nuevo Leon, Mexico in 1933. Living in the woods, he had a typical country lifestyle, fishing, hunting and working for his dad. His dad owned a sawmill and with his children's help he turned it into a successful venture and opened a timber supply store, which eventually became so successful they were able to open more stores. By the time he was a man, he was well secured, owning his own ranch. He still enjoyed the activities of his youth and was known as a very skilled shooter, his love of hunting leading him to amass a sizable collection of guns throughout the years. Being Irish, to me a sizable collection of guns could really mean a single gun, but he had a good few. In 2010, Alejo was 77, an old man compared to the gang members who showed up armed to his ranch in November. They wanted his ranch for their drug running operations and they weren't overly interested in taking out a mortgage. The men who belonged to Los Zetas cartel told Alejo they'd be taking his ranch and he had 24 hours to get his things in order, at which point they would return and kill him if he was still on the property. From what I've seen of these cartels, that sounds extremely reasonable. I'd say, thank you gentlemen, it was a pleasure doing business with you. I hope you enjoy your new ranch, I'll be on my way. But Alejo was no pussy, telling the men that this business arrangement would actually not be suitable to him. The men left, telling Alejo they'd be back in 24 hours, to which he responded, I'll be waiting for you. Probably not in an Irish accent. Alejo gathered his workers on the ranch and told them they could all have the day off. He had other plans, and over the next 24 hours he set about cleaning and maintaining his guns and fortifying the ranch. He intended to live up to his promise to the gang. The next morning, a number of trucks pour into the ranch. The men exit the vehicles and surround the ranch with their weapons, hoping to intimidate the old man into giving up peacefully. But Alejo is still not leaving the building. As a final warning, the men fire into the air. They are met with a hail of bullets from the windows. The gang take cover and return fire. They are well armed and not about to back down from an old man. Inside, Alejo's weaponry is mostly hunting and sports rifles, but he has devised a plan to maximize their usefulness. In his preparations, Alejo had set up guns at every window and doorway in the building, and was now running from opening to opening and firing at the gang, making it appear as if there were multiple shooters coming from within, and making it hard to predict where the next target was going to be, and more importantly, where the next bullet was coming from. Alejo's years of hunting and shooting were serving him well and several of the gang members had already been hit. The remainders were fighting fiercely though, riddling the building with rounds and even lobbing explosives. After a frenetic battle, the firing from the building had finally stopped. The last remaining criminals tentatively entered the building, perhaps expecting to meet with a number of Alejo's workers. Instead, they were surprised to find only a single person in the building. Alejo Garza Temez. He is dead. With the building in a shambles and the firefight likely attracting the attention of the authorities, the gang decides it's time to make like a tree and get the fuck out of there, leaving six of their own to rot. And they were correct, the Mexican marines were on their merry way. When the marines arrived all that was left was cleanup duty. 
It turned out that two of the six criminals left behind were actually just unconscious. Man, these guys just really don't give a fuck, leaving their dudes behind like that. Like, imagine you're one of those men. You wake up and you're getting hauled off to prison because your gang just left you behind. In a fight that they won. And that is the heroic last stand of Alejo Garza Temez. The story of an honest, hardworking man standing up to those that, left unchecked, would rape the world and rule the ashes. But he wasn't the first, and hopefully, he won't be the last. And hopefully you won't be the last. To like, comment and subscribe, buy my t-shirts and follow me on Twitter.